Russian nuclear weapons in Ukraine are nearly depleted. Another week of turmoil in Ukraine led Russia's Vladimir Putin, Sergei Shigu, and Valery Gerasimov to launch criminal retaliation strikes against civilian targets in Kyiv, which largely failed despite their intentions. At this point, not even the most devoted Russian propagandists can explain the Kremlin's indecisiveness and the military strategy that is guaranteed to fail. Russian President Vladimir Solovyov urged his countrymen to move to a war footing and recognize we're fighting against NATO. Then he demanded even more bombing of Ukrainian cities. Putin and his generals still don't have a plan for Ukraine 16 months into the war. Regularly, Russian ground forces suffer humiliating defeats. Groups, complete with their officers, have given up and surrendered. Storm shadow missiles, manufactured and supplied by the United Kingdom, can now attack targets that were previously off limits. Even Russia has an insecure border. This was evident on May 22 when pro Ukrainian elements of the Russian Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Legion raided the Belgorod Oblast. The skies above Moscow have not improved. Wagner CEO Yevgeny Prigozhin and ultra nationalist Igor Strelkov criticized Putin for failing to protect Moscow residents after another drone strike on the Kremlin flagpole on May 30, just days before the May 9 Victory Day parade. Some have tried, but the Kremlin spin doctors can't fix those inconvenient facts. On May 30, Shigu reported unprecedented success on the battlefield, evoking comparisons to the Baghdad Bob incident. The Russian troops continue to inflict effective fire on the enemy, he wrote. To that, he said, 196 HIMARS rockets were intercepted and destroyed, along with 16 harm missiles and 29 Storm Shadow cruise missiles. Shigu continued by saying that Russia had liquidated 70 Ukrainian raiders and hit a U.S. Patriot missile system in Kyiv during a counterterrorism operation in Belgorod. Eight Ukrainian drones, he said, were destroyed after being launched in a terrorist action targeting civilians in Moscow. The audience of military officers sat impassively through what they must have known to be ridiculous Kremlin propaganda. In an attempt to mislead his listeners, retired Russian naval officer Konstantin Sivkov claimed that the drone attacks on Moscow were very positive, adding that they would help to mobilize Russian society against the enemy. Moscow's mayor, Sergei Sobyanin, also played down the significance of the attack, saying that UAV attack caused minor damage to several buildings. The city's entire emergency response team has arrived. They are trying to figure out what went wrong. So far, there have been no reported serious injuries. Russian propaganda aside, the drone strikes delivered another mental blow to Russia, further tearing at the country's fragile psyche. A special military operation that has lasted for 16 months now has no business including strikes by the Ukrainian military against Engels or Moscow, where since Soviet times, they had the best air defense and missile defense system in Russia, as Igor Gurkin explained. Putin's retaliation strikes against Ukrainian civilians were being sold by Kremlin propagandists as though they were decisive battlefield successes because Russia lacked a sustained conventional offensive capability. Putin is reverting to veiled threats of nuclear escalation and Chernobyl-like environmental disasters as Russian missile and drone strikes lose efficacy against a U.S. and NATO-supplied integrated air defense network. Putin signed two documents last week meant to send a unified nuclear message to the United States and NATO. The first allowed for the stationing of tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, although full command and control remained with Moscow. According to Belarus's president, tactical nuclear weapons were already on the move. Russia's participation in the Treaty on Conventional Armed Forces in Europe came to an end after Putin signed legislation withdrawing the country from the pact on Monday. Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson, and Zaporizhia are four regions of Ukraine that Moscow illegally annexed, and the new dimension created by these two decrees is frightening. Putin has previously stated that he will use nuclear weapons and any other means available to defend Russian territory. Moscow has chosen to create environmental disasters for the time being rather than use nuclear weapons or adequate conventional options.
On May 26, Russian forces launched a missile strike against the Karlovka Dam in the Donetsk region of eastern Ukraine, flooding the area downstream and forcing the evacuation of residents living along the Vivcha River. The flooding that ensued made it difficult for Kyiv to resupply and sustain the deployment of Ukrainian military units stationed near the front lines. On May 26, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense released new information indicating that Russia is planning a major accident at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant as part of a false flag operation to thwart Ukraine's imminently expected counteroffensive. The Kremlin appears to believe that by staging a Ukrainian attack on the plant and causing the leakage of the radioactive substances, it can trigger an international investigation which would require a ceasefire, allowing Russia to use the break in fighting to better prepare for Ukraine's counteroffensive. However, the Ukrainian government has not been shaken and will not cave to Russian nuclear blackmail. President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine made a defiant announcement on May 29 about when the counteroffensive would begin. The mind games, both real and imagined, continue, with Ukraine now setting the terms through action, reaction, and counteraction. Along a 900-mile front, Gerasimov must now be ready for any eventuality, be it deep strikes, raids, reconnaissance in force, supporting efforts, or the main effort itself. The Russian soldier in his foxhole can only watch helplessly as the Ukrainian army grows stronger. Putin has been reduced to using nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Even he probably realizes by now that they are not a winning strategy. Russia's conventional loss in Ukraine is now a matter of when, not if.